Well, welcome everybody. I'm Mason McDonald. I'm your uh, co-leader for today's session of Nevada County Online. How many first timers do we have here? Nice. Wow. Good number. Judy, you're a first timer. Yeah. I know. Oh. I see you everywhere. I can't imagine. That's what I told her. <laughs> well, um, basically for everybody that's here, you kind of know what the drill is. Um, we meet on the fourth Tuesday of every month, and um, was it Monday or January we're moving over to the library? Yes. Okay, so we'll be having different digs rather than meeting here starting in January, but we'll put announcements out on the website, and at the holiday party we'll remind everybody. And, so that's all good. Um, one of the things that we'd like to do is just reach out to you guys because oftentimes we learn more from each other sometimes <coughs> than we do maybe from a presenter. Um, not that we don't have a great presenter today. Uh, actually, we do. Uh, consummate entrepreneur, and you're going to learn a lot of stuff of how to really take a lot of what you've been learning and get some traction with websites and with social media and so forth. But what, what we do like to do is we like to go around and find out who's having some success with their online business. You know, what's something unique that's happened to you or an aha or a breakthrough that you'd like to share with the rest of the group? And the other option is, if you have a question for the group, something that's yeah. been challenging you, an obstacle, something that you think that there may be some expert opinions out there, or opinions nonetheless, uh, please ask that too. You always let them off the hooks. <laughs> Matt, I say can go. Sure. First. Now, uh, I'm Matt Vanderpol. I have a web app called QA Tab, which facilitates website QA. Um, not necessarily targeted to this audience. Um, what is website QA? It is reviewing your website to identify any issues that need to be fixed, uh, broken links or incorrect text. Just it's a general QA quality assurance. It's a review of the website to identify problems. Um, so I've had this business going for a couple years now. And in, over the summer, I started uh, committed to vlogging once a week, every week. So I've had 15 posts so far, 15 weeks in a row, and I'm actually seeing my traffic go up. So uh, that was a nice to see the gain from actually doing that. Excellent. Great. Anything specifically you're doing in the blogs that you can I'm uh, I'm writing posts that are of interest to my intended audience. So my audience is other web developers. And so I'm writing posts with information to teach them things they may or may not already know, just with the intent of trying to bring my audience to my website. And, and what is it your website called? It's called QA Tab. QA Tab. QA Tab. Mm -hmm. All one word, QATAB dot com. Thank you, man. Sure. We've got some time for at least a couple more. Who else has their hand up? Hi. Hi. I'm Katie Carter, and um, last month was my first meeting, so I'm new at this. Um, I've had a website that Jeannie built about a year ago, and I'm a nutrition consultant. And I have always felt insecure about my writing. And so I, I put out these blogs, but I've only been doing about once a month. And so after last week, or last month, I decided I really need to feel more confident about my writing. So I had a private session with Molly Fisk, a lot of us know her, mm -hmm. and boy did she target me. And you know, she looked at all my blogs and what worked and what didn't. And um, so I'm just really inspired. Um, she, you know, specifically wants me to shorten my blogs. And each blog that I wrote, she said this could be three blogs here. You're you're giving way too much information. You know, and that's my own insecurity thinking I need to prove myself, you know, that I'm mm -hmm. professional. <laughs> so, um, anyways, uh, breaking them up, and then she said, and you've got to, uh, you know, advertise something that you're doing, so, you know, get them back in. So, it, after each blog, you know, I have um, a, a workshop or something that I'm offering. And, um, yeah, and I, I don't know if this is cool, but I'm, I'm offering a workshop um, in December. <laughs> 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 Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, so the blog is going to be on adrenal fatigue, how to how to um, support adrenal fatigue. And my <coughs> position is with dietary and, and um, 
lifestyle changes. And then this one is um, um, adrenal fatigue. So it's right before, it's December 11th, and I'll pass it around. You can just kind of pass it around. And yeah, I need one, too. How many if words did Molly suggest? She said 300. 300. 300, because okay. I was at thinking 500, but she said, no, you know, especially what my topic is, I don't want to depress them. <laughs> so, uh, I've got something for you guys I just heard that's, that's relevant to this. Uh, how many of you have heard the story that Abraham Lincoln, to write the Gettysburg Address, wrote it on the train there on the back of a napkin? How many of you have heard yeah. that? It is completely false. <laughs> he spent three to four weeks before that to try to polish that address down. He would get in the bath where he could relax and then recite it and work on the emphasis and delivery. The entire speech is about two and a half minutes long. So it's a really important historical thing that actually the comment is writing something shorter can actually be harder yeah. than writing yeah. something longer. Yeah. But at the same time, if you can come up with the question that your audience is asking or a question that you really have got a good spin on, then spend that time in the bathtub and you can write a blog. <laughs> with the computer. Right. Yeah. Uh, computer. Zap. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm sure iPad. I've got actually a waterproof iPad case. Okay. Yes. That you're selling. Well, I just want to express a success story. Yeah. About uh, five months ago, I started coming to these meetings. Did not know a thing about mm -hmm. online marketing. Nothing. And I was amazed at how much, first of all, there is to learn. Secondly, that it's not that difficult if you just keep at it and just keep doing it. And today, my wife and I have a very nice website called willandjudy.com. We haven't filled it out yet, so they really have to have content, but it's got, it's, we're getting there. It kind of looks like Jim Britz up there with all the little things, with drop downs. Now we just got to start filling it in, and I'm having a ball. Oh, Great. Awesome. Okay. We'll do one more. We'll do one more. I want to just add, um, and we'll take Tom. I just want to add one thing to that comment, is for those of you that are new or newer, you notice that Cheryl's videotaping these presentations. All of the presentations are up on our site, and we have access to them. So if you've missed a session, or you want to go back and look at certain subject matter, that's the resource for you. So no starving at the barbecue, okay? <laughs> and not only on the Thank website, you, but they're broadcast to the local community through NCTV. Oh, so we have these meetings Cheryl. going on. Oh, Hi, NCTV! Hey. Hey. <laughs> Tom, go ahead. Mine was an open question since you posed that opportunity uh, on the conversion of blog readers to email list subscribers and whether or not when people say that they have a successful blog they're actually getting a successful conversion rate so that they actually own the people and know what's going on instead of just having drop-ins to their world reading their content. Um, I can speak in reference to one of my clients, Jonathan Robinson. Mm -hmm. uh, his main call to action is to download three free happiness audios that is on the right hand column in a very prominent position throughout the website so that he tends to get opt-ins to that on a regular basis from a variety of traffic sources so we've got Google optimization and blogging but uh, basically if it's built into the website in that way then as people get to know you and trust you and I'm sure Matt you're going to do something similar to that that you might be doing what's called an irresistible offer which is really high standard to live up to, but something that somebody can opt into. As far as that traffic versus other sources, that's where I would look at once you have enough of it to pay attention, Google Analytics to figure out what tends to work better for you. Okay. Um, just a reminder that today's uh, NCO meetup is brought to you by Pay It Forward Processing. Mick Collins was kind enough to step up to be our sponsor. He's going to talk more about his um, offering and his company and services at the conclusion of the meeting. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Corian to introduce our speaker, Jim Britt, for today. Okay. Um, let's do a couple other announcements before you take off. Oops. Holiday party. Yes. Right. What's that? What, what is the holiday party, Machen? What? Have you been at the meetings? Uh, what's the date for the holiday party? I think it's December 11th. Is that a Tuesday? And it's Wednesday. 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 Oh, the 17th, sorry. 17th. December 17th. That sounded good. Right. one at um, 151 Union Street, which is in the old Union Building downstairs. It's a fabulous venue. Yeah. They'll give us lunch for a certain price. We'd like to get $13 from um, everybody who comes to join us. 
We'll have an MC. It'll be very <coughs> fun and beautiful. And if you want to pay today, you can write a check to Machen because Machen likes to receive money any way you can get it. <laughs> well, who's going to do it for you? <laughs> and also remember, this is our last meeting here. Who knows where we're going January? Library. Okay. Library. The library. Madeline. Library. Madeline Le Helen Library. You'll receive emails on both of these issues, but we'll be there all next year. And it'll be um, slightly bigger space, no columns, uh, an easy to get to venue for everybody. So we're looking forward to that. So a couple changes. Yes. What time is the Christmas party? 11 to 1. Thank you. And you'll get an email, we'll send out our typical email. So, so 11 to 1, 13 to 1, December On the 17th. 17. Yeah. Thank you, Matt, who has a memory. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so let me just give a brief, brief introduction of who we are. And uh, we are Nevada County Online. We are here to have speakers like Jim Britt who can share with us their stories, their tricks, techniques, tactics to market themselves and make money online. Uh, we are volunteer driven and we are based on people showing up and having a good time, giving us good reviews and requesting what they want to see, the information they want. Uh, along that line, we do take donations, and I would recommend today that you guys dig deep, because I just got a bill for over 200 bucks, which is for the next two years of web hosting. So it means that we're, we have our website as our best foot forward to have the videos to show information about past presentations. So it's something that, as a group, we need to pay for that, and I appreciate being <laughs> reach, uh, a payback on that one if possible, humbly so. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so I, and I use pay it forward credit card processing, so back to me. Um, so from here, I think we've covered the basics. Please tell your friends about the group. There's business cards that are available that have our website information there. If you have a few of those in your wallet and the conversation of internet marketing comes up, please share that. Uh, as a volunteer-driven uh, group, if you would like to have a role in uh, how we do Nevada County Online meetings, please talk to Susie, Mason, or myself. Mason will be leaving a little bit early today, but I will be staying afterward as well as Susie. Um, agenda items, I think that's good. Let me introduce our fantastic speaker for today. I met Jim Britt through this group. He was usually sitting in the back, looking like he was standing. <laughs> because he's kind of tall. Me too, Jim. Uh, <laughs> you too, Jim. Uh, Jim, as it turns out, is an incredible local resource for Nevada County. He is an entrepreneurial author, speaker, and mentor. He gave Tony Robbins, you guys know Tony Robbins? Mm -hmm. He gave Tony Robbins one of his first real jobs. He's been around for a while. Uh, he has learned from an entrepreneur, entrepreneurial point of view the things you can do to make yourself successful by adapting your business and what you do to ever-changing markets and tools. So internet marketing has been a real key as he's continued to put out more product, showing his expertise, his writing, his ability to teach the entrepreneurial mind. And where he's at now is to present to us Jim Britt, a entrepreneur's journey into internet marketing. So Jim, come on. All right, thank you. That's great to... Uh be able to uh, chat with you guys today. Um, we're going to have a little different format, right? Yeah. Uh, we're going to do a little uh, interview format, I guess. Um, but uh, where do we start? Uh, I know you pretty well, but and I've seen you speak. And by the way, like this is this is he's been interviewed plenty of times. He is completely able to stand in front of a crowd of thousands, let alone our crowd of fifty or so that are here today. So this is just a, a crutch so that we can pull out the gems of what he's doing recently. So I know you pretty well. I've heard you tell your story. Can you just give a brief overview of who the hell are you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'll tell you how I got started uh, as an entrepreneur. Uh, I didn't have a choice. Um, dropped out of high school in the 10th grade and um, uh, didn't have any direction. Grew up pretty much in poverty in Oklahoma. My first job was picking cotton. That lasted from age 6 to 12. And then um, got married at 17, uh, started uh, a family about a year later. So I had a child at 18. 
worked in a gas station pumping gas and uh, made a dollar an hour, 60 hours a week, hmm. and felt fortunate to have a job in that small town and thought I was doing okay. And then I upscaled from the, from the gas station to uh, working in a factory on an assembly line, uh, which I don't recommend, but I worked there for two or three years. And um, I was a good gas station attendant. I was a good cotton picker. And, um, and I was a good factory worker. Uh, but what I learned from those three jobs is that uh, working hard doesn't necessarily get you ahead. Uh, it gets you, it gets you uh, tired. Uh, so and there's nothing, worth work, uh, nothing wrong with hard work. Uh, I think we have to put work and effort into everything we do. But, um, but I was using my own two hands, and I remember one of my uncles saying, you know, you'll never make a lot of money with these. He said, you've got to use this. And he was saying, you got to get behind a desk. That's where you need to be, is behind a desk. Of course, back then there was no internet. There was, you know. Uh, so um, uh, that's where I started. And then I got from the factory, I got introduced to direct selling. And that's probably where I learned the, the biggest lesson in my life. Um, I didn't have any money, didn't, no business background, no sales experience, didn't know what to do. Um, this particular business I started uh, required a $4,000 investment. Uh, long story short, I went to 23 loan companies before I found one to loan it to me at a 50% interest rate. Um, and, um, and I got the money, got started. Two weeks later, they informed me I needed another $4,000, which I didn't see coming. And I went to my father-in-law and convinced him to mortgage his, um, his dairy farm. So now I got a farmer with a shotgun, and I got a mafia, somebody that loaned me 50% 50, 50 interest loan. And, but my first year, I ended up uh, um, not doing too well. In fact, I lost everything. Um, both of my vehicles were towed away. I quit my job at the factory. Um, my home had already been foreclosed. Um, all my furniture had been repoed. Uh, I had a note on the door. It's by the order of the sheriff, you got five days be out. And I didn't know what I was going to do. But what happened during that five days was almost like a series of miracles that took place. And um, I don't have time to go into all of those miracles, but uh, in five days I had uh, a place to live, a three-bedroom apartment that was furnished, and I had no money. I mean, I, had, I, I didn't have two cents in my pocket and no food. And so I had a place to live, a vehicle to drive, all expenses, $300 a week, um, and an opportunity that over the next 12 months uh, earned me just over half a million dollars. And my other business, at the same time, one of the, one of the things that happened, which was major, is somebody showed up at my door, <coughs> my phone is disconnected, <coughs> knocks on my door, and he's from the company where I had, had my business, and he sits in my floor for two hours and coached me. And that was before there was a such thing as a coach. He just sat on the floor and told me what I needed to be doing and what I was doing wrong, what I was missing. And that business also earned me about a half a million dollars that next 12 months. So I went from nothing and my banker turning me down for a $4,000 loan and, and 22 other banks and loan companies to uh, a millionaire in, um, in, in 12 months where my banker called me Mr. Britt. You know, and here I am, like 23 years old, and you know, what do you do with a million dollars at 23? You spend it. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> so, anyway, that's that's where I started. But what it what it taught me was uh, not to give up, not to ever give up. Um, and I had people trying to talk me out of it. And my objective with my business, I had to talk to people every day about my product and my business. And my goal every day was 10 people, and I did it every day for a year. And, and I lost everything. Uh, so I had 3,650 reasons to quit, but I wouldn't. And part of it was I didn't, I, I didn't leave myself an out. I didn't, I didn't say, if this doesn't work, I'll go back. I just said, no, this is going to work. And that, that lesson taught me a lot over the years. So that's where I started anyway. Mm -hmm. And you've used internet marketing for a while now, right? Yeah, I've used internet marketing for a while. Uh, not a long time. Um, of course, there was no internet back then. Um, in fact, we were still, I think we are still using 8-tracks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Um, I'm at fact, the borderline there, right in front of my, yeah. in high school, yeah. we had the 8-track yeah. player. I mean, I remember when cassettes came out, I said, those things will never make it. <laughs> 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 Who's got a well, that's a good thing, because one of the themes we've talked about here is the need to reinvent yourself in the exactly. way you do your marketing. It's one of the reasons that you were drawn to internet marketing. That, right? That's, uh, I mean, that I, I've reinvented myself many times over the years. I, I, you know, I got in the seminar business back in uh, 1975 and first started promoting seminars and I started presenting seminars and I started developing my own material and I was also an entrepreneur. I've owned a lot of different businesses, both online and offline and national franchises, different things like that that I've done. Uh, some that succeeded really well, some that didn't do so well. Um, but that's okay, as long as most of them do okay. <laughs> um, but um, uh, of course the internet wasn't around and, and back in the 70s and early 80s I put over a million people through seminars, uh, paid tickets through seminars. And I had a sales staff that when Tony Robbins was one of my staff, I taught him to go out and sell and worked with me for five years. And, uh, uh, that's how he got his start. I should have taken a percentage. <laughs> uh, so, um, uh, but there was no internet, and then the internet came on, and, I'm, and my thought was, this will never make it. <laughs> Why would I want the internet, you know? Uh, my brother-in-law came out with a, a, a program called the Internet Toolbox. Maybe you saw it on television. He sold that toolbox. It was how to get on the internet and use the internet, not how to profit. And the thing went flat. And I'm watching it one day, I'm going, what are you selling anyway? He said, how to get on the internet and use the internet. And I said, I could care less. And I said, but if you tell me how to make money on it, he went, oh. They went out and found some people making money on the internet, got some testimonies, put it on the air. They did $90 million in sales the first year wow. with a box. That they didn't own any of the content. All they, had, all they owned was the box. Wow. And everything else was donated, and some people paid to get in there. Either. So they did pretty well with it. So that was kind of my first exposure to the internet, and I decided to um, create my own website. And um, so I hired some people and made a beautiful website. I mean, it looked really good. And we finally went live, and I got up the next morning waiting for sales to come in. I thought, where's the sales? <laughs> and there were no sales. And I thought, well, maybe people just didn't see it yet. So I said, tomorrow for sure. And I'm telling everybody, you know, got my site up, but next day, no sales. And I didn't realize that uh, people don't just come to your site, you got to get them to your site somehow. So I went for about a year trying to figure out how to get people to my site. So anyway, that, that was my first exposure to the internet that wasn't great. I had a great looking site, but that was it. <laughs> Pretty doesn't get it. And how did you see the role of the worldwide reach of the internet affecting your ability to do business? Well, it, it, it's it had a, in, the, in the beginning, it had, when I, uh, right after that, uh, I figured it out, and I did some campaigns that were very profitable. Um, but then it changed, too, and I started to see that what you, what you did uh, last year or two years ago doesn't work today sometimes. Some of it does, some of it doesn't. A lot of it doesn't uh, today, so things change. And, um, and I saw, I, I went from one campaign I did on the Internet, I, I came out with a book, um, I sold the book for $29, uh, sold over 25,000 of them, right at 25,000 of them, just under that, I think, uh, in about a week. Um, and came up with the idea to do an upsell, uh, that if I'd knock $5 off of the price of the book if you view my two upsells. And so What's an upsell? An upsell is a, a, is a secondary product that you're, you're going to add to the book set. So I had two um, audio, two 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 C D audio programs that were, were my secondary sale, the upsell. And so they viewed those and um, eighty I think it was eighty six percent of the people bought both of the upsells. So, uh, so I learned something about that. Um, well actually the one just prior to that, uh, I did a book campaign on a different book for entrepreneurs called Do This, Get Rich. And um, there was quite a few successful internet marketers around, but I did a joint venture project where I got, um, um, I think I had maybe 15 people doing mailings for me. Uh, Tony Robbins, T. Harbecker, Donald Trump, uh, Nightingale Conant Corporation, and so I got them to do all the mailing for me. And then I got them to contribute bonus items to my book. So I had like $800 in bonus items for a $29 book. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, we sold thousands of those. And, um, uh, and what did they ask in return for doing those mailings? Uh, they, they didn't get anything in return. They just um, uh, they got a chance to put their product in my package. And, um, and they got exposure from all of the other mailings that went out. So Tony Robbins has a, a million mailing, then they got exposure <coughs> from Tony's mailing with their free, free gift. Will you be able to make the same offer and say, hey guys, you're going to get exposure if you do a big mailing for me? Or have things changed? I mean, yeah, today, no. You, on occasion, you can do that, but not very often. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, most people, you know, if they want to do a mailing for you, they're going to take half of what you sell, 50% mm -hmm. you know, affiliate commission. Mm -hmm. And that's mainly for electronic products. So yeah. your cost for delivery on electronic product approaches zero because yeah. it's essentially just a file and some electrons that are moving out there. Yeah. Whoa, we got some questions in the back, yeah. Hey Jim, besides your relationship with Tony, did you have an established relationship with the other guys like T. Harv and Trump? Or uh, Some of the people I did. Uh, Harv, Harv I did, we've done a lot of seminars together, and, and um, Nightingale Conat, they're, you know, they're kind of, they're still in business, but they used to be really big back then. And those, Earl Nightingale and all those guys were friends of mine. And so, yeah, I, I went to people I knew, and one internet marketer saw it. He was a big internet marketer, and he saw my offer, and he, he, he called me. He said, this is the best offer I've ever seen. He said, how did you put this together? You know? And since then, there's been a lot of big ones like that. But, um, but, but again, it changes, you know. What you did then doesn't work now, you know. Um, so, did I see another hand go up in the back there? Right. The... Uh, your story that you told at the beginning is quite unusual to go from zilch to a million dollars in one year. Mm -hmm. uh, I worked with SCORE, in fact Bob back here is a, our SCORE guy, if any of you want to know. Uh, and uh, the uh, working with helping people try to get their businesses going, maybe one out of ten make it. Mm -hmm. So your story is very unusual. What were the two characteristics? Typical results may vary. <laughs> that's, that's true. Like we, let's be honest, you know, it's more than sticking to it. What were the characteristics that took you from being a failure to being a success? I mean, you, there was something there other than miracles that yeah. worked. Yeah. No, Have you ever written anything related to characteristics of successful <laughs> entrepreneurs? There's actually, uh, there's actually six traits. I, I interviewed uh, 12... Uh, mega millionaires, one billionaire, uh, a couple of years ago, and um, created a television infomercial that didn't work, that I spent a lot of money on. Um, but it was interesting doing the interviews that um, as I was into about the second interview, I realized that even though each one of them was in, they were in different uh, categories of business, uh, that they all had the same traits. Uh. And um, and so there's there's six traits that that I've coined that all successful entrepreneurs have in common. Um, and they are. Well, they are. They are. Um, you have to read the book. Yeah. Have to buy the book. Yeah. They are a desire to um, uh, a burning desire, something really burning inside that you want to do, not just a passing desire. Because yeah. everybody's got a desire to change. Even the person out on the on the street corner with a the sign, they've got a desire to get something in, in, you know in their their bucket. But um, you got to have more than that. It's got to it's got to be a burning passion in, inside you that you want to do more. Even if you don't know what it is you want to do, having that desire to change will will change the way you look at things. Mm -hmm. Which brings up the next one, which is you know, a decision. Um, if you want to be, let's say if you want to be wealthy, whatever that means to you. It might be having a residual income coming in every month that supports you, or it might be having $200 million, I don't know. But it, it, the opportunity doesn't come first to be wealthy. What comes first is the decision to be wealthy. Because with that, your, your view of the world changes, mm -hmm. and the view that people have of you changes. Mm -hmm. So... That decision, I mean, you, you've done it before. You've had things that you went after before and, 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 and obtained because you decided to have it. Nothing short of that would do. Because I, I believe that uh, everything we have in our life is based on the decisions we've made. Um, good or bad, like it or not like it, it's just it's a series of decisions. It's not, we didn't attract it, you know. We didn't, um, I don't believe in, like, the law of attraction. And, you know, that doesn't work. What works is... 
uh, you make a decision, and then you change your view of the world. You know, if you, if you don't want to be wealthy, why would you look for ways to be wealthy? But once you've decided to, then you look for ways to. Um, and, that, and it's that way with anything. I don't care if you're buying a new car, a new outfit, or whatever. You go, ah, I want a black suit. Okay, well then you go shopping for a black suit. You got a passion for it. And otherwise, you didn't think about a black suit before. So that's a, that's the second thing. The third thing is um, is is you have to be bold in today's world. You really do. You got to be bold. You got to you got to step out and um, and do things that that sometimes put you out on a limb that you don't. I mean, I've I've done some things that I didn't know if it was going to work. I mean, a television infomercial. You know, I, I spent a year and a half putting that together and a half a million dollars, and it failed. You know, beautiful. Still trying to figure out what to do with it. Maybe something. And don't feel <laughs> sorry for him. <laughs> but still, you know, some things work, some things don't. But you just move on. You know, sometimes I'll go back and look at it and say, well, how did that work? You know, but uh, I don't, I don't get caught up in it if it doesn't. But you gotta, you gotta be bold. You gotta, you gotta do things um, that other people aren't willing to do. And and the next thing, which kind of ties into being bold, is you gotta be willing to step out of your comfort zone. You know, everything that you're comfortable with is right here. All of the good things are out here, out, out in that second circle. And, and to get there, you have to be uncomfortable. You know, it's not, it's, it, it's, it's just like starting on the web. What, talk about uncomfortable. For me, it was. I mean, I was a person that's face-to-face -face with, with people. I wanted to get in front of people. I wanted to talk to people. I don't want to push buttons. And, it, and little by little, I kept stepping out and doing things. I mean, initially, I was afraid to push a button. Because I was afraid I'd erase something. <laughs> I had a few times. Gosh, <laughs> Initially, I, mean, I, I wrote two chapters in one of my books and pushed the wrong button and didn't save it. You know, it's gone. I'm going, oh my God. Two different times. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't learn from the first one. How much but for I that learning? <laughs> I got a backup about every 30 seconds. It backs up. <laughs> What's after bold? Hmm? What's after bold? Praise. Uh, step, step out of your step comfort zone. Comfort zone. Yeah. Get out of your comfort zone. Um, you know, if you're comfortable, you're not growing. That simple. So step out and do, so, do, do things that make you uncomfortable, and you'll grow from it. That's the only way we grow, I think. Um, and the, um, the next thing is uh, the ability to let go. The ability to let go. You've got you to gotta let go of the things that didn't work. You gotta, people get so caught up in what happened in the past. It's not happening to you now. It, it happened in the past. So. But people get caught up in it. But you don't understand what happened to me. You don't understand. Yeah, I do understand. But, you know, <laughs> let's just get on with it, you know. <laughs> so you got to just let go of that stuff. If something doesn't work, learn from it, yes. If you had a bad experience, learn from it. But if, you know, if you're angry at somebody in the past and you're still carrying it around today, if you lost money in the past, you're carrying it around today, all you're doing, your view of the world is that. And that's what you're going to get. You know, that's what you're going to see. You're going to see more of it, you know. So, um, you know, if you're closing your heart because you got hurt in the relationship, but you're not going to open it until somebody comes along that will cause you to open it, then uh, you got a problem because you're going to end up with somebody else who's going to break your heart. That's mm -hmm. um, hey, so, you should be a speaker. And, uh, <laughs> so, and, and then the, the, the last thing is you have to take action because action is what creates results. You've got to take action. And, you know, the results... Everybody creates results. I mean, the person on the street corner creates a result. The person robbing a convenience store creates a result. The, the policeman chasing the person that robbed the store creates a result. Um, the stop sign out here creates a result. Everything creates a result of some kind. The question is, what's the result? So I always encourage people to take a look at your last five years and ask yourself, five years ago, are you where you thought you'd be today? And if not, why not? Connect the dots backwards and see what decisions you made that led you there, and then make some changes. And then it'll move forward. That's not online stuff, but what else? <laughs> but it, it's telling because it's your product. Mm -hmm. Jim Britton is the product, right? Yeah. So the idea now is he's had this world open up with internet marketing, and you can do so many different things, but you're now looking at what are the channels to carry that. So let's talk about internet marketing. What are some examples in the last 10 years of the most successful? You, you highlighted a well, few Well, I highlighted books. a couple of them. And I, I've done quite a few campaigns that were, I mean, those, those two books that I came out with, 
um, were two of the most successful ones. Um, Repeat that again. Do This Get Rich sold how many copies? Uh, Do This Get Rich did uh, just, uh, both of them did right around 20,000. Mm -hmm. Within well, what period well, of time? Uh, about a week. One of them was about a week and the other one was maybe two weeks. What was the other one? Uh, actually, the title of that one was also Do This Get Rich, but headed for a different category. Oh. One was Do This Get Rich for Entrepreneurs, oh. and the other one, because of my experience in my initial business, Do This Get Rich for Network Marketers, which is a huge marketplace today. Were they e-books? Pardon? Were they e-books? E no, were they, they, were, they were printed. And you had to, you had to do you still do printed books, CDs? Yeah, I do print on demand now for my books uh, when I come out with a new one. Yeah. But I still have I still have books and physical. And then you pay for the shipping. You you pay for that. Yeah. 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 But overall, what percentage would you say are your products planned for this new launch? For example, going to be well, electronic. Well, I, I have I have about uh, probably 80 hours on audio, uh, so okay. uh, there's for this new launch that I'm doing right now, which is the biggest thing I've ever done in my whole life, and um, and it is just like going. Crazy! <laughs> I can't believe it. Uh, I mean, it really is hard to believe the, the way it's happening. And I'll, I'll explain in a minute what it is. But um, but what what I started to to notice is like in my business, I did a lot of promotion for seminars on the on the web, and it and it worked. You know, I would show up in a city, and you know, we'd have a thousand people and pay tickets. People would buy buy tickets. And I do promotions where I do a two for one or buy it early and get in for, you know, instead of ninety nine dollars it's seventy nine dollars or or instead of, you know, seven ninety five for a two day event it's three ninety five or something like that. Or buy a ticket, bring a companion, you know, all kinds of things. And all of that stuff worked until social media hit. And then all of that kind of quit working. And uh, but in combination with a few other things, in in my industry, the speaking industry, uh, there's probably been I don't even know what the number is, but I'm guessing there's been a hundred thousand people entered it in the last few years, all competing for the same space, all competing. I mean, on LinkedIn, I've got I think thirteen or fourteen thousand people on LinkedIn. I would venture to say ninety percent of them are authors, speakers, uh, coaches. Uh, same thing on Facebook. Same thing, but they're everywhere, and it's, and it's not a bad thing. It's just that it's just what it is. So I'm going okay. Well, I've been around for a long time. I you know I still get business. I still get referrals. But how do I how do I how do I go out there on social media and not get lost in the sea of other people promoting similar looking things? For the to the point where, and you know what I'm talking about. You just you look at something for a split second and click it off. I mean, I, that's what I do. I look at the headline. If it doesn't grab me, it's done. If I don't recognize a person, it's gone. You know, because I don't have time to read all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And social media, I mean, Facebook, I'm a scroller. I just go, <laughs> okay, nothing. There. And look up here, see if I got a message, I'm off of there. And um, you know, I post now and then, and I haven't, I haven't done real well with social media. I mean, I've made some money at it, but like LinkedIn, I was one of the top 1% searched on LinkedIn last year, um, which was... We'll turn that back on in a second. Okay. Well, that's better. Wow. Oh. You could have done that any time. Yeah. Couldn't see anybody out there. <laughs> <laughs> it's like one of those big audiences with 10,000. You, know, you can't see anything. <laughs> um, so, um, so I, about a year, about a year ago, I thought, okay, I'm going to try full circle. I'm going to go back to where I had 300 salespeople on the street selling tickets because nobody was doing it. Because when I did it, a lot of people copied it. You know, Mark Victor Hansen from Chicken Soup used to stand at our, our seminar door and go, how do you put these people in the room? Oh, my God. And a lot of other people came out of our seminars, you know. A lot of, a lot of great speakers out there. And, um, um, and then a lot of them started promoting the same way. To where you couldn't even go into a business and sell a ticket. So we kind of phased out of that. And, um, and then I thought, nobody's doing it now. I'm going to go back and, and try it. So we hired like 25 salespeople, ran ads, brought them in, trained them, spent two days with them, 
educated them, created a PowerPoint for them to go out and make their presentation. We couldn't get one person to make one sale. <laughs> Nobody would sell a ticket. You know what they wanted to do when you call them up? Well, I'm posting right now on Facebook. Or I'm on LinkedIn now. <laughs> or I'm, I'm writing something to put out on the Internet. They won't go out and make the contact. So times have changed. So we said, okay, that's not going to work. So it took me over about a period of a year to figure it out. <coughs> and, you know, affiliate marketing, I've done a lot of affiliate marketing where, where you get, you know, other people marketing for you. I've done a lot of joint venture marketing where you get <coughs> other people, same thing, I guess, uh, marketing for you. And I've done a lot of free stuff where I put it all over, all over the net where, you know, I'll, uh, somebody wants me to donate a free something to their book promotion, I'll put it in there because <coughs> it drives traffic back. Uh, but still wasn't doing what I wanted to do. So uh, myself and, a, and a, my business partner, uh, we were sitting one night in San Diego in a nice hotel out by a fire pit having a glass of wine. And uh, he's in the same business, has been for 25 years. And, um, and we were, we'd done some seminars together and he said, you know, this industry's changed. And I said, yeah, to the point that I'm, I'm thinking about quitting. I'm thinking about just not doing it anymore. Mm -hmm. Do something else, maybe plant trees or something. I don't. I mean, what do you retire from? I mean, <laughs> yeah. I don't want to do that. <laughs> but maybe just travel or do something. I don't know. And um, but little by little, we came up with a couple of ideas. And he said, "You want to do that?" My first answer was no. So do you? And he said, "No." And we talked a little more, and we came up with this idea over about the next two days uh, that we we launched. Uh, what's called a pre-launch uh, three weeks ago, expecting within, um, by the January 1st, that we would have maybe 5,000 people enrolled uh, by January 1st. Uh, we're now, the last 24 hours, we're putting 1,800 people, and it's growing. Uh, the 24 hours prior to that was like 1,600. Uh, two weeks ago, it was like 100 a day. Now it's like, it's crazy. Enrolled in what? Well, we, we started a company uh, called uh, Quanta, Q-U-A-N-T-A, and the definition of that is sudden and significant change. Um, and we looked at the, we looked at a network marketing model, but we said, you know, it's not going to really work, uh, even though it's a popular thing to do, it's not really going to work with what we want um, because of the way it's paid out. And we wanted to create something that incentivized affiliates in a big way to go out and market our products, uh, all digitally. So we have eight different programs that range from $25 on a monthly basis up to $3,500 for a four-day event. Um, starting with two products, and then two months later we introduced two more, and then about six months later two more. And well, and yeah. Specifically, what are the products? Okay, uh, the first product is a, it, it's called Personal Performance Platform, and it's um, it's digitally delivered. Um, it, it's a monthly uh, membership, twenty five dollars a month, and you get um, you get a, uh, a really power packed video every day, uh, five days a week. That's uh, by four to six minutes long, um, and a pers personal development videos. It's in that category. Personal development, entrepreneurial is some of our later programs. But the, the first four will be strictly personal development, and, which is a huge industry out there. Um, and you also get two audios every month uh, that are really cutting edge, brand new stuff, uh, uh, two about 30 minutes, uh, 30, 45 minutes long. And then you get a what we call a mastermind call uh, once a month that we take questions from from uh, our members, and we go through the questions and answer some of those questions, and so it's kind of somewhat personalized. Um, and we'll be adding other things to it to make it more robust as we go along. So that's $25 a month, and then we have a $149 program. And currently, it's 27 audios, um, and if you took the two programs that we merged together, they would sell on the internet for probably about $700. Mm -hmm. We're selling them collectively for 149 so the value is off the chart uh, for what we have and um, 
two programs are called The Power of Letting Go and Mind Masterpiece. And we brought them together and we call them Fusion. So it's a fusion seminar or, or a program. And then we have a $100 membership platform that uh, we, have, we don't have all of the details on that yet, so I won't share that with you, but it's going to be way more than what the $25 one is. And most everybody will upgrade to that because of what it is. Um, and then we have a $500 program uh, that we'll bring in early next year. But the key that, that we came up with was, uh, you know, most affiliate marketing, we mentioned earlier, is a fit, usually a 50% uh, payout. And let's pause there to make sure everybody's <laughs> on the same page for that vocabulary. Affiliate marketing is where you have people who are essentially selling your products. Amazon's the biggest example. <clears throat> if you have a website, you can have a link to a book that's being sold through Amazon or an item. You then make a commission, a percentage off of any sale. So it's a great place to be as a merchant or as a information leader because you're essentially saying I'm going to create this content and then giving other people the tools to sell that but they only get paid if they make the sales. That's a pretty good model. It means that you're not necessarily paying for people to see the message. You're paying for people to actually go through and make those purchases. So um, we started thinking about what kind of percentage do you pay out? And I said why don't we pay 100%? Well, how do you make money doing that? <laughs> but that's what we settle on, is 100%. And uh, so we pay, if, uh, if, if you're an affiliate, you've got to sell $125 a, uh, a month programs, you make $2,500 a month, every month. Not just one time, but every month. If you sell a uh, $100 a month program, and you got 100 people on that, you make $10,000 a month, every month. Um, so how do you make money if you're paying out 100%? So, so what we did was we, uh, we created a, a two-phase uh, uh, program that, that starts it all. And do you have a diagram? Are we ready to switch to PowerPoint? Uh, to yeah, it will be in just a second. And, and it's, it's open over there. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, the first phase is we, we did a, what we call a pre-enroll or pre-launch. And um, uh, we have a, uh, in fact, we we'll probably go to my... It'll take a moment to oh, okay. Um, we created a squeeze page and all kinds of promotional tools uh, in the back office, and you can sign it for free. And we already know that we'll get probably somewhere between 50 to 75 percent of the people who sign up for free that will that will uh, upgrade when we officially launch January 2nd. Um, so we our our target was between three weeks ago and January 2nd to have 5,000 people and have at least half of them upgrade. Um, and, and now we've way surpassed that. It looks like we'll probably have, the way we're going right now, we could have close to 100,000 people. Uh, and they all upgrade. And the upgrade is they buy the $25 program and the 149 program. And then we charge them a $24.95 administrative fee to participate. So we get paid the $24.95, that runs our company. And then we, we bring in the people and we have a duplication process that I'll, I'll show you in a second that is pretty ingenious, that uh, people are just, I mean, we're like all over the internet. I can't, you know, go look, I can't even believe it, it's everywhere. It's, uh, yeah. Do you, do you think that your, these people that are signing up are new to you and your brand or are you leveraging your past? Well, I, I leveraged my past for about 500 people. Uh, so I put in about 500 myself. So that's how I participate. I'm in, I'm in the plan. I'm in the compensation plan the way we structured it. Um, but the way that works is that 500 can turn into 5,000 uh, people that I'm getting paid on. So being the first in, that's, that's what causes it to, um, uh, to really be profitable. But also we know that we're going to end up with you know, 100, 200, 300,000 people in it, ultimately maybe more. Well, at 2495 for 100,000 people, that's $2.5 million a month, um, which is not a bad profit either. So the way we did it is it's kind of unique. It's, so let's say that, that you're here and you sign up Mary. Well, if Mary goes out and signs up uh, uh, six people, let's say, on the $25 membership, the, the second 
fourth, sixth, and every fifth thereafter rolls back up to you. And then of those people that roll to you, um, this might be one that rolls up, every second, fourth, sixth, and fifth thereafter still rolls to you. And that goes through infinity. So uh, three becomes nine, which becomes 27, which becomes 81, which just keeps going because it all coded back to you. So, and it's 100% commission. So the same thing with Mary, uh, that's all coded back to Mary for these, although for the second, fourth, sixth, and every fifth thereafter, rolls back to her. So it's a, you give up a few, but you gain so many more. And it just keeps going right on down through the thing. And let's pause there a moment. Okay. Because the reason that we're doing this as a case study and sharing this is not necessarily that you are in fact Jim Britt with this body of work looking to invest how much? Several hundred thousand, three hundred thousand for this? Uh -huh. So Jim put three hundred thousand dollars of skin on the line based on this theory that he was going to be able to build this model out. What's your projected revenue? Not with the recent up, uptick with how many you're signing up. What was your projected revenue in 2014? We can, well, 2014, we, we've reworked it a little bit. We, we think we will do uh, over 50 million the first year and, and double that the second year. Okay. So if that hasn't gotten your attention, <laughs> uh, I want to make now, sure that we're clear because we're getting not 50 we're getting million into in my pocket. Yeah. That's 50 million in total volume. So I'm paying out. Um, that I'm paying out most of that 50 million to somebody making commissions. But I'd be pretty well too. Yeah. As I said, don't feel sorry for Jim Britt. <laughs> uh, Would it be so classified we're gonna... as a pyramid or not? No. No, there's no pyramid here. It's one level. You're getting paid on one level. That's it. Yeah. But everything's a pyramid. Of some sort, yeah, I agree. Yeah, every business is a pyramid. Yeah. This organization. Really? Yeah. How come I'm not making money? I picked the wrong kind of pyramid. Yeah, yours uh, is inverted. So we're, we are going to get some details here. We're going to be open to questions from people. The main thing I think our goal here is not to teach you how to build no. this model. We're going to go through some of the highlights that are involved in the sales funnel and the videos and the ways that Jim is presenting himself as an expert, bringing people in as a focus. But just wanted to let you know, because like for me, I had to go through this. I had to spend about 20 minutes, 40 minutes going through this going, okay, I'm starting to get how this But really just think that re what I looked at is if I could bring in 500 people, so my 500, there's nothing rolling up to anybody because it's, I'm, I'm, you know, it's there. So uh, of all of those 500, every second, fourth, sixth, and every fifth thereafter rolls to me. So if I bring in somebody that, ha that brings in 100 people, uh, an affiliate, then there's 20 of those that roll up to me. So that 500 can turn into 5,000 really fast. And, mm -hmm. and if you got 5,000 people, and let's say we roll out a, let's say, let's say you've got 100 people, and we roll out a $500 package, um, in order to participate in the plan, you either have you either have to purchase one for your own use or sell one. So everybody everybody buys or. Uh, either buys or sells. So if we roll out one for five hundred dollars, then the commission on that, if you had a hundred people, is fifty thousand dollars. Oh, and people will earn that. I mean, it's I mean, people in holy internet, cow! You've generated wealth, Jim. Top internet marketers. I mean, big, big internet marketers are coming onto this. I mean, one lady, she said, "Oh my God, you got Mac." I said, Mac who? She said, I don't even know his last name, but he's the biggest thing out there. You can't believe it. If you, you're going to get so rich. If she, <laughs> not Mac. Mac brought in a thousand people his first day. A thousand. You guys are crazy. I don't even know who he is. He <laughs> found us. We had all kinds of people. Mac, Mike, Phil, Sane, different people like that that's coming on. I mean, it's just almost scary. Cool. I like it. Kind of weird. Yeah. That's I'm going to open some of the good wine next time I come over. I'm hoping the good wine. So just so you a can. We'll pool term over there at my place. And pool term is just the two of us playing for the first time and finding out that Jim's better at the long shots. I'm better at frustrating his next shot. <laughs> I know we did. Well, and so you can advance just by left, yeah, uh, right arrow. Let's go. Uh, we'll go from there. I won't spend more time here, but let, we'll go uh, to. Um, um, I've got, I've got, uh, go to Chrome? Yeah, right there, uh, log in. 
Son. There we go. So I won't take the time to go through the video. Before we get into any more details here, does anybody have any questions? You got the concept, which is essentially information products being sold with Jim and his partner, creating a lot of content for entrepreneurial growth, self-growth, and then he's created a marketing system so that now whenever he releases a new product, he will immediately have thousands and thousands, perhaps millions of sales. So it's kind of cool for him because at this point he can not retire but go back to what he does well. What is this? I don't know. Hmm? That's not me. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is that uh, spyware thing that I told you about. Oh, get rid of that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so we we started here with a just a a squeeze page, and it's got a six minute video on there, and um, this is what everybody's using. All the internet marketers love it. We didn't know if it would work or not, but it's it's pretty cool. We it's got a little little opening video in there. And just to show this, this is a, a hub of his marketing. I want to just go through at least yeah. a little bit of this. Yeah, through a little And the other thing I will tell you through, um, and we're only going to be doing the sound off the speaker here, so be very quiet. Uh, but this is a common approach where you get somebody into a video like this and they are much easier to find contractors, other people that can help you make them. to teamquanta.com okay. because that's not the squeeze but that's a welcome video got it so that's after somebody signs up uh yeah what what do you mean by squeeze yeah. what do you mean? oh squeeze, squeeze? That's, <laughs> it's it's like a it's like a funnel system that you take them you take them to a, you know to a, drive the traffic to that that little video and then that video takes them into something else so that video uh takes them to um i just click on the Thing. Uh, do I need to log in um, for this one? No, because that's going to do that. Try a different browser um, for you. Okay. <coughs> Why is this my mm -hmm. seat? You might Watch also it. call a squeeze page a landing page. Yeah, it's a landing page. Yeah. It's like when you click on something, that's where you land, and you know it gives a little bit of information mm -hmm. and where you give your email address and get on your email list and sign mm -hmm. up. So they, well, I tell you what, go to journeybeganznow.com. How'd you do this? How many websites do you have for this? Uh, well, we'll have. Well, that's just a link going back to where, where I want to go. So, yeah, we'll put mm -hmm. those. Hey! So this is where they this is where, where they land. Okay. And then this is the entry uh, video. Not for purchases, but for affiliates. Yeah, the sign up is an affiliate. Yeah. No, the full program for purchases is not yet. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's try that again. This is what somebody would see the first time they've maybe gotten an email from some list that they're subscribed to, like this guy Mac you were talking mm -hmm. about. Then it would link back to a page like this. Yeah. And uh, it might take a second to buffer. I will, uh, yeah, because I don't want it to play like that. My kids watch videos like that, and it drives yeah. me crazy. <laughs> How can you watch a video like that? I, would, I do want to note one thing that it said in there, which is a marketing technique. It said, celebrities, uh, yes. experts, everyone's joining Quanta. At that time, was anyone joining Quanta? No, no. Well, you created this. No. <laughs> but look, you predicted the future. Well, we it's where you're at now. We've got experts. <laughs> okay. There was a question out there. Hi. Hi, I was just wondering how you found your partner. Uh, through seminars. We, we've known each other about 12, 12 years. So and how long have you been partners? Did you just partner for this just project? For this. Yeah, just oh. for this. Yeah. It's kind of cute that you're both gyms. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it's catchy. G-Y-M. 
Okay, or so uh, it's just buffering slow. Mm -hmm. We're on the, the Courier Suites network. Let's try again, and if it pauses again, we'll just yeah, go from there. Mm -hmm. Just kind of um, gives you a flavor of what we did, and, and that goes up to what was about five minutes long, I think, something like that. Um, and it's it's you know, it's pretty simple, but it's really designed just to to establish some credibility and and um, uh, get people interested in in signing up. And at the end of it, it says it's free. Sign up. Uh, we'll we'll send you additional update dates as we go along. So after they sign up, we send them a, an email every day with a video. So video, email, and copy, um, giving them updates on what's happening with Quanta, encouraging them to share it with other people and, and build their team so that when we do launch, they've got a ready-built team. So we'll have people that will earn checks day one as soon as we launch. Um, and um, it's working. I mean, it's working exactly the way we, we hoped it would. <laughs> so... Um, <coughs> Where do you get your um, videos produced? Do you have a team that does your video production? Do you imagine it yourself, or do you have them design it? Uh, like the little short one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we just did it. Our, we have somebody that does it. I have a fellow that does those little short ones, in, uh, in, uh, one in the Philippines and one in um, Indonesia. But what about the ones that come every day? Uh, we do those. We, we just we film those. We alternate back and forth, and we just film them. I'll go up at my pool and film some, or in my office and film some, and usually about one minute long. And then our our videos, our, our product videos, we film in different locations as well. I'm getting ready to start filming those on green screen. But we got together and uh, for our $25 package, we got together and filmed 80 about 85 minute videos for that. So we're you know a few months ahead on that. And what is this Philippines and Indonesia? Uh, one person's in the Philippines. Doing oh, what? they did that little yes. intro video there. Um, and then the, the other one's in Indonesia. We have about, if you, um, in fact, if you can log back in, I'll show some of the things we did too that uh, was really, uh, really beneficial. Okay. Uh, you want me to just go to team, Yeah, and just log in there. I think it was this one? Yeah. Uh, uh, no, go back to the. Oh yeah, go, go to the tools. Okay. Yeah. So what we did here is we we created um, uh, we we've got uh, pre-written emails, tweets, uh, videos. We've got about ten videos on there. I'll show you one of the little videos. You can go down to the videos. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Videos. Really so these are viral. email templates we're passing through yeah, here these that are allow people to market your system, your company. Yeah, we wrote them for them, so okay. they, all they have to do is post them. They can so this will be common to anyone who's done affiliate marketing, where you'll provide tools, banners, other things for your marketers to market for you? And all they, all they do is enter the <coughs> link. And Look, tweets. Yeah, we got tweets. Look at that. Wow. <laughs> you thought of everything. Wow. 
Okay, I'm going to keep and just scrolling just down. Just keep going, you'll, you'll see probably next, I think. So Facebook posts. I love this. People are going wild over Quanta. They are. <laughs> <laughs> we wrote that before they went wild, but they are. <laughs> 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 These are uh, and I went past go, that. Go so to, video uh, one. I want to go down to, I think it's, we got a few different, I mean, that little, right there. Right, right you want this one? Yeah, this is a cool one. This is going all over the place. One moment, we'll let this buffer. It's only about 12, 15 seconds long. <coughs> so it sounds like the key to your success was a lot of preparation. For how long? How long did you've been, have you been working? Three months. Three, Three months? <laughs> Building a team. So, uh, Will, you would ask about people in Philippines yeah. or Indonesia. It's very common that businesses will hire people overseas, India and Philippines and other third world countries, that term is, is problematic, but other places where the economy allows you to hire somebody for two, five, ten dollars an hour, that for example, Jim might be looking at a video production person that he's paying ten or fifteen dollars an hour for, that would probably charge you sixty or sixty-five dollars. So there are there are definitely pitfalls along the way that you can have people that just stop communicating with you, or if you get in a legal dispute, you're really going to, you know, have an you issue with somebody in the Philippines. You can't get in a hurry. So, <laughs> and you need to develop your resources to know that you can know and trust that person, build them over time. But that said, it is a way that you can hire overseas. Did you use Elans for that, Jim? Uh, no, it went through. I can't remember the my web guy <coughs> set it up for us. And this video uh, production specialist, he did all the videos that are on that page, the <coughs> marketing pieces, correct? So you're outsourcing everything you can? Yeah. I have, I have three full-time uh, people. One that's, uh, that, that handles all of this, all of the, the landing pages, all the web development. He's a brilliant huh. marketer. And then I have a full-time programmer and an assistant programmer. And then we have a uh, software we'll play from. It, it doesn't look like it's likely to play from this huh. embed right here. Mm -hmm. right. What if you drag back to the beginning on the time bar? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, just drag it, shift work. Thank you, Mac. Oh, maybe it's already. So smart. Tech support for Mac Oba. That's why we have So it's kind of a cool little Can you give me a ballpark? How much did that individual video cost you to produce? With uh, about a hundred bucks. About a hundred bucks. Whoa! <laughs> and that was outsourced. Nice. Yeah. Who produced a storyboard to create it? Uh, I did. Mm. Yeah. So I write all I write all of my copy. Um, and uh, there's a couple of other cool ones on there. Can you all actually all scroll down the page with that, with that pointer? Jim, can. try hitting the right hand arrow. Do you visualize the graphics too, or do you just give them free lunch? You Some, know? Sometimes we do if we, if we can. But do I play it from here too? Uh, no, you just tell me right, if you want something to play. <laughs> there are all ask Matt if it doesn't you know, work. This one, this one hardly even has sound to it, but it's just kind of a little cool. Little. <laughs> Okay, scroll to the beginning and then let buffer. <laughs> we're just, we were we're trying to get those just little attention getters, you know, that people would watch. And, but that little, the robot one seems to have caught it on. Oh, cool. So try lots of things, see what works, and then maybe do yeah. other ones like that. Yeah. We did about 20 of those. I think we had maybe 10 of them. And I think one of the things that's approachable here is that for you to storyboard, find someone to make a video for you that would be a way into your company, that, those tools are now much more accessible than I think they've ever been before. So that you have the ability to go and say, okay, go to freelance.com and say, here's my PowerPoint of what I would like the video to look like, and you bid on how much that would cost to make. And then, then we have images, just things like this, 
you know, that they're posting. Is that an actual newspaper, Jim? Yeah. <laughs> New York Times. Shop it out. But I'm on the front page, whatever it is. <laughs> That's what's important. Uh, the little, little lifestyle looking things and you know, just little images. So I that, that went out early in the morning on Saturday morning. And everyone just wanted that cinnamon roll. So yeah. Cinnamon roll for you while you read the paper. But, yeah. And then we, we have a little description of the compensation yeah. with them too. So we try let's, to think let's of... Let's go five more minutes and okay. we can take some questions and then we'll have a little bit of time at the end for our sponsor. So I didn't mean to cut you off. No, but that's fine. Anything else you wanted to uh, cover? No, from the uh, point? no. no. Okay. So anyway, it's, um, it, to us this was just a reinvention. Uh, okay. Because I, I I really didn't know which way to turn. I, I knew I wanted to keep doing what I'm doing, and I did have thoughts of saying, "Well, maybe this is maybe this is at the end of what I do." And but then my mind goes to work and says, "You know, what else are you going to do?" And going, okay, well, I need to reinvent myself, and it was frustrating because I didn't know I didn't know what to do. <laughs> but I think the intention to do it. Then when we sat, and all of a sudden, it just one thing led to the next, and we, and we. Came up with something that's really going to be really big, and um, I mean, I'm I'm actually I would I'd have, I would have been pleased with 5,000 people in in six weeks, but I'm going to be blown away with 100,000, and, and it's, it's definitely going to happen. Uh, so, um, and when you say 100,000, you mean people opting in for free to for an free. email list? Yes, but so we're going to we'll get we'll get half of those. We're getting virtually nobody opting out. I mean, maybe one. Maybe one a day that opts out of our of ongoing emails. Uh -huh. So, so they're they're getting the stuff. They're and and they're duplicating. We're we're watching what they're doing, and most of them are bringing people in. So it's starting to just grow. So they see the opportunity. So they're starting to to connect people as well. So um, it's pretty pretty solid. So they're receiving ticklers from you between now and the launch date yeah. of January third. <coughs> yeah, every day. Mm -hmm. yeah, we do a conference call every day as well. What are the um, Jim? What are the demographics? Are you getting that are well? When you see our full website when it rolls out, um, our testimonies on there are going to range from 21 year olds to baby boomers uh, because we want. Well, I did a seminar in San Diego. In fact, that the, the day that we met down there um, and started this uh, mm -hmm. was a group of. Kid, I call them kids. They were they were 21. All of them were under, <coughs> under 25 or 28 years old. And and I did uh, a, a talk on the six things that wealthy entrepreneurs have in common. And they're like, I mean, you, you couldn't get out of that room. I mean, they're like blown. What never heard stuff like this before? Where did you get this? Where did you find? How did you learn this? And we want to know more about it. And one of them's carrying around the book Psycho Cybernetics. And he comes up to me and he said, Have you ever read this book? And I said. As a matter of fact, I said I read it 30 times in 30 days. Mm. And he said, really? And, and I said, he said, when did you do that? And I said, oh, it's been about 35 years ago. Mm. He said, 35 years ago? No, this is a brand new book. And I said, no, did you look at the publishing days? 1959. <laughs> and he goes, oh my God, this is not a new book. And he was just like blown away with this book. Mm. And, and I said, yeah, I was president of Dr. Maxwell Malt Psycho Cybernetics International. I bought the seminar rights to his book. And uh, that and Think and Grow Rich. Hmm. He said, oh, I read Think and Grow Rich. Oh my God, you owned that. That's why I didn't own the book. I had the seminar rights to it. And, uh, but when I left there, I thought, these are young kids that's never been exposed to this stuff. Yeah. And you know, uh, us, as, as we get older, we hear about these things. We read the books and we're exposed to it and the meetups and things. But these young kids, are they're online, they're doing their thing, and they're doing our cell phone stuff and they, and when they hear this they're just they're eating it up. So we said we gotta to appeal to that group. So we went to we're gonna go all the way through from you know different age groups to make sure that we, we, we tap them all. Great. Um, more questions. We got one or two and then we'll have pay it forward come up and take the stage. Right. Uh, so obviously you're re repackaging a lot of the material you had before. When do you think you're gonna run out of material? Yeah. Uh, I don't think I will. You think you've got enough? Yeah, I mean, um, I mean, it, it, <laughs> I don't know where it comes from, but uh, if I if I wanted to put together a, a half-hour audio on relationships, 
you know, I'd have it scripted in the next two hours and recorded okay. two hours later. <laughs> so I don't, you know, it just uh, uh, it it just comes. But I've got a lot of material. But most of our programs are are fixed in packages. But then the the hundred dollar and the and the twenty five dollar membership uh, subscription will be ongoing uh, things. And the hundred dollar we're gonna we're gonna bring a few other uh, key people in, you know, well known, very successful entrepreneurs, not speakers and trainers, but people who have really uh, that you can learn from, you know, that's gone out that you might recognize. And we'll bring those into some of our bigger events as well. And we're gonna stream all of our events worldwide. We open in 180 countries. Uh, wow. We we're already in 36. The last I checked, and um, we're backed by the largest merchant service in the country, or in the world, I guess. Um, we have offices already set up with brick and mortar in England and in the UK. We had to to do business over there. And, um, so. How are you managing the affiliate payouts? Did you have to write your own software? <coughs> yeah, to do uh, we have. We hired a software company to write the software, which merges with uh, our our um, um, merchant account, and and the software that pays out the affiliates, and then that the the money gets captured and put into a commission account, and we're using a company called iPayout, and they go in and tap the commissions and pay everybody. So we never we never calculate all those infinity numbers yeah. for people. You know, and it's pretty. It was a, a simple program, but it was it's costly to put together. But it but it's pretty simple and, and as far as programming is concerned. Um, but um, but yeah, we had to do that, and we have to pay them ongoing too. They they maintain our software, but we have programmers that interface with it because there's a lot of a lot of things that have to. It wasn't CGI. It was a, a company called Graystar. Really, really good. Really good. It wasn't the Obamacare group. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I would have done that website for them for half that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then retired. <laughs> Didn't work. Can you get the last question? Yeah. So, what's your initial, uh, initial investment and what's the ongoing expense to maintain this? Well, uh, initial investment is somewhere around 300000 And ongoing to maintain it. Um, Nothing really. Uh, it would cost me twenty five hundred dollars a month for the software, and then I'll have well, I'll have some employees. Um, uh, not right away. But we have three right now, and they'll run it for probably the first ninety days, and then we'll we'll start bringing on other employees. Our customer service is all handled through um, I forget the name of the company, but it, it rotates through, and they're they they actually work from their homes, and they're trained, <laughs> and then. It rotates through, and they have 24 hours to get back to somebody when, when it hits their, their computer. And, um, and we've got most of the stuff pre-written uh, as far as questions, because you know, so that they, they can answer their own questions. So um, it's not going to cost us any more investment. It's going to come out of the, of the profits. But our 2495 administrative fee will run the company and, and create a nice profit as well. Great. Thanks, Jim. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I'm, I'm sorry if this doesn't uh, connect with, uh, you know, with what you do. But raise, raise of hands. How many people did something in this presentation connect with you or something you can yeah. see for your business? You're right. You fail. <laughs> well, you know, I'm seeing more and more of this model because yes. Adobe is doing that instead of buying their products, like, um, mm -hmm. let's say, uh, a package of their their. Mm -hmm. Dreamweaver and the other mm -hmm. products, you're there. You can go online and do the same thing mm -hmm. for so much a month. Mm -hmm. So it, you, I'm seeing this more and more. We're even getting charitable organizations now that uh, that's coming to us, uh, saying, "Well, if, if we sign up as a charitable group, and we, we can now go out and get companies that'll put their people on the on this twenty-five dollar platform to educate their people and make them more productive, and we get the money for our charity." And they get a write-off because it's going to either education or a charitable mm -hmm. cause. So we've got a couple of them already that, that came to us and said, can we do this? And I'm like, yeah, yeah you can. <laughs> so if you want to look at it in detail, you can go to journeybeginsnow.com. And, it'll, uh, and if you want to, there's, there's no obligation if you, if you sign up. If, you know, if, you don't, if you're not interested, you can just uh, un unsubscribe. <laughs> um, 
but you can, you can get in and look around and see all the stuff that we've done and read some of the stuff and read a little bit about the company and a couple of the programs. There's a couple of videos on there about the programs as well. And we'll get that PowerPoint from you to post on the Nevada County Online website. The okay. video of this presentation will be available on the website as well. Uh, I gave you kind of a lame thank you. Thank you, Jim Britt. <laughs> So uh, we're going to bring up uh, Mick in here in just a second. I've got a couple other closing comments okay. to make. Uh, related to this topic of creating a membership site, there's a presentation from, I believe, May of 2013 by Barry Friedman, which is looking at a lot of the same information here from a different point of view. Uh, he focuses on a lot of the tool building and how to do it as a small entrepreneur, whereas Jim obviously put a lot of time, effort, and planning and, and budget into making it happen. Uh, I want to ask for your help bringing in more great speakers like Jim. I'm the speaking coordinator for the group. That's it. Eh, it doesn't, I, like Jim, doesn't necessarily have to exceed Jim, because I'm not sure if that's possible. Please talk to me if you have any suggestions of anybody else who might have a case study like this, where if they're comfortable, we could do an interview format like we did today. But I really am looking at 2014, and I need to ask for the membership's help. Talk to me, email me at corion at gmail.com if you have any suggestions there. Uh, now, let's talk about Pay It Forward, which is a credit card processor that I use for batteries for less. Hi, Mick. Mick Collins. Thanks, thanks. thanks. Pay tough, Forward. Tough act to follow. Um, thanks, Jim. Yeah. Pay It Forward is a, is a mom and pop owned company. Yeah. All the way. Thank you. All the way, all the way. <laughs> Pay It Forward is a mom and pop owned company based out of San Diego. Uh, they're also national and have thousands and thousands of merchant accounts across the country. The company was founded about nine years ago because their friends were getting ripped off by credit card processors. A few years after they started the company, David and Renee Van Heel, the owners, lost their home in the San Diego wildfires. They used <laughs> Cardfinity, the company, to raise money for victims. They took that idea a step further. This January, Pay It Forward was born. We donate our net proceeds to nonprofits of your choice. Big deal, right? We do this without raising fees. We do no contract, no cancellation fee, no monthly minimums. We also guarantee next day funding, even for American Express. My process is a simple 15 minute survey. It's not a big, long presentation. And because you're all NCO members, I'll give you my super secret power close. What do you think? <laughs> I'm already a customer. What do you think? Thank you. Uh, anything you'd like to add? I was going to say corn should give us a benefit you like, experience. What do you like best about the company? Uh, the, the, main, the main thing that, uh, if you are accepting credit cards through your business, yeah. the typical organization says that there are tiers that you pay a discount rate, a rate to credit cards. Yeah. What happens though is, do you know what happens if you have a rewards credit card? You guys know airline rewards, things like that? Mm -hmm. Do you know how that's paid for? It's paid for by the merchants because then instead of paying 2.5%, they're paying 4 or 5% to the credit card companies to cover that bonus to their customers. The key thing that I see with Pay It Forward is that they have a fixed percentage. I believe it's 0.2% that they add to whatever that rate is. So you're only paying the actual rate you get charged without, for example, if you have a rate, a tier that's at 2.5% and, and then card charges 3%, it's very common for credit card processors to charge 4 or 5% because that's the next tier up. So you're paying a percent more on every transaction, whereas it's very simple to say, okay, I want to pay whatever the credit card rate is plus 0.2, and then I'm donating to Women of Worth here in uh, Nevada County and other nonprofits. A uh, couple of quick notes. Our tech support is U.S.-based. Uh, I'm a local account manager, so my throat is at arm's length for you, uh, you as well. Uh, yeah, okay, we, we just tied it. That's a, my style. We tried to take a, a, a actually, a, a client said that to me. They appreciated to have a neck at arm's length. Um, we like to take a layer of BS away from the uh, industry. Uh, merchants get hammered daily by solicitations, and it's, it's confusing and frustrating, and you go along to get along. If anybody you know a business that takes credit cards, take this advice, take this one thing away today. If you've never engaged me, Talking about merchant services, never sign a contract. That's it.
Okay. So we're raffling something off. We yeah. are raffling something off. Who has not put a card in? There's looks like there's a bag of excellent goodies. You want to tell us about Nick? What's in your goodie bag? I'm not sure what it is. It's a surprise. No. <laughs> 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 I don't have this in place of paper. Would this be in place of paper? Yes, all forms of marketing, else? mobile, yes, now internet, terminal. One more. We got we got three more coming. Can't read it. If you can't read it, it's mine. Okay. <laughs> all right. Thank you. If you pull a Korean.com card, make sure you read it because it could be one of the yeah. people. <laughs> okay, so I, you get to choose. Okay. What's Close the, your what eyes. Are we, what are we He's got a bag of goodies. He doesn't oh, know what okay. they are. It's, it's a prize. <laughs> I bet okay, it's a your wife put it together. One single. We have Rod Provors. Rod. Rod. Yeah. Okay, look at this. Look at this. This looks lovely. Take it out of the bag. It's all put together. Put it back in the bag. Nice. Oh. 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 Right, so that brings this meeting to a close. We do not get kicked out of here anytime soon. Not quite. So don't feel like you have to run out, and Susie will close the meeting. If you guys, I hope you all want to attend the holiday party, which is on December 17th from 11 to 1 in downtown Grass Valley at 151 Mill Street, which is the old union building downstairs. Really nice venue, and um, we'll, they'll, they'll be serving us a really good lunch. We'll have good entertainment. Um, it's $13 a person, which is like the best price you can imagine. We front the remaining balance of it from the donations you guys have generously given us. Um, so you can pay today if you want by check, um, and we can make the checks out to Mitch and McDonald, and I'll spell that for you if you want. And we can't yet pay, take pay because we haven't figured that one out. But, um, and we can take money at the door, obviously. We like to know kind of who's coming and if they're really going to pay. That's why I'm... <laughs> Give us money now. And then the next meeting, of course, is in January, the fourth week in January. If anybody has a calendar, they can tell me what the fourth Tuesday in January is. And do we know our speaker at this point? I think you do uh, know something. I haven't confirmed him in the last couple of weeks, but we're going to focus on local marketing. I'm bringing in a specialist, his name escapes me right now, from the Roseville area, who works with businesses for Google Places and local review sites. Local marketing online. Always, always good. Always good. I, I mean, yes, Cheryl. Uh, sorry to interrupt um, uh, your thought, uh, but I thought it might be important to mention the parking at the um, library, too, because yeah. there's a little um, request since the library is open during that time and we're using the community room. Do you want to talk about that? Right. If you can park down alongside um, or down in the lower parking lot and walk up, they're going to monitor it. It may not be an issue. Uh, and it may be an issue, but they ask people who are in the community room to not park in the main parking lot, park in the auxiliary places. So if we can do that, that'd be great. It, it's because the library's open and they want to leave some spaces for the patrons yeah. of the library. So. And we're glad that the library is being used by lots of people. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yes, um, oh, Susie, David. Susie, uh, the uh, 27th yeah. of January would be the 4th. 27th Tuesday. of January. 23rd. Uh, January. 23rd. 4th? 23rd. I have 28th. Oh, oh, my oh, calendar. Oh, what what oh, year do you have? The 28th. 27th oh, of January. Yeah, 19, uh, no, we'll go to 2014, the 28th of January. <laughs> and um, thank you all very much for coming. If you by chance didn't put money in the money bucket, let me know. I would be glad to take it. Those who came in late. And don't you just love Thanks, everyone. See you again at the holiday party.